Now what is up my fellow prod coders or welcome to this video and today we will make our app more dynamic. But before we get started, uh, one quick thing. So as we're approaching the end of this tutorial series, I'm kind of wondering what to do next. And that's why I created this email list I've linked in the description below. And there you can sign up and you will receive um, updates and polls. So that means if you're interested in a particular type of technology or you want to see a clone of one particular site, um, you will have the possibility to vote there. And then depending on what you decide, I'll see what I can do. Okay, but back to topic. So right now, if we enter something and we hit enter, then we get redirected to our search page. And that seems pretty okay, but it's not really dynamic. So first of all, this thing here should show the actual search term and the location. So basically we want uh, this, like sparse in this case, to be shown here and the location, New York, to be shown here. And let's work on that first. So we can do that even though we haven't connected to the Yelp API yet. So let's go to our code editor and let's think what we need to do. So we need to go to um, search. And in here, we want to pass down the current uh, term and the current location to our search results summary component. So this is like the thing with this gray background. And uh, we're passing that down just because we don't want the search results summary to contain any business logic. Um, so we're going to just put it inside the search component. And in order to get the query parameters, to parse them and to pass them down, uh, we will need React Router or our uh, Rea used React Router uh, package we recently installed. And remember that we only did this uh, because React Router does not support hooks yet. And that's why uh, we just said, okay, Let's go for this package so that we can use hooks throughout the entire tutorial. So let's say we want to know where we are. And that's why we will extract this uh, location object from our React router. And then what we need to do is we need to say, OK, now that we know where we are, we need to somehow parse this query string. So we need to get this and then parse it. So for example, if we have percent 20, it should be converted back to a space, for example. And this is actually uh, pretty easy to do because we can just um, create a new object, which is called uh, of type URL search parents. So this is a yeah standard JavaScript object. Like it's not specific to React. And if we pass the current um, search, uh, the query parameters uh, in there, it's going to create an object out of it. And then we can just say, OK, please give us uh, the parameter, the query parameter with the name uh, find descending. So that is the term. That was this weird uh, naming convention that Yelp is using. And then we can also say, OK, uh, please give us the location and this was under find log right so if we go back yes it was find log and find descending and by the way we're just not using location because we already use location in here and what we can now do is we can just pass this down so we can say term equals term and uh, location equals and then um, yeah, location param, like location param, not location, because location is the object that we pull from the router itself. Okay. And now all we need to do is we need to go to our search results summary class. And instead of this hard coded, uh, these hard coded strings here, uh, we will just say, uh, props the term and uh, props dot location and now if we save this 
we go back and we enter something here in I don't know uh, San Francisco bam then you see now we are successfully extracting these um, query parameters here and we're displaying them here that's super nice uh, however there's still one thing that we might want to do and this is we want to actually have our search bar here pre-filled because remember the search bar should contain the current search and since we <laughs> just kicked off a new search we want our query parameters to appear in this search bar here as well and this is actually yeah pretty easy because all we need to do is we need to go to search and fortunately we just extracted them here so we can just pass them down to our nav bar and remember that our nav bar contains this search bar here and this is where we want to display them so we will just pass them down as well I'm going to say term term and we're going to say location is location param and then we will open our nav bar and in our nav bar we should have this our search bar component yes and there we can just pass this down as well so prop uh, maybe let's first put the props here and then we can say props of term and location is props dot location now we are passing this down like a couple of levels but since the app is quite easy i would say it's okay at the moment so we don't have to go crazy with i don't know some context or anything or even with some state management library like this is totally sufficient and now that we are in the search bar so the search bar is this component itself we realize that we actually already did it so we gave it or like our two uh, variables here um, we initialize them with props.term and with props.location and if they are not there then we are just going to put an empty string now one thing though is that we haven't wired our inputs up yet so just because we <laughs> set the values of these variables doesn't mean that these values are reflected inside our inputs so what we just need to do is we can just say value equals and then we just pass term and down here we can just say value and then we just pass um, what was it location okay so if we go back to our browser and we search for I don't know barbers here in uh, New York bam then you see okay nice our search bar here is pre-filled so we have whatever we have in the search in the query params here like ends up in our search bar and it also ends up here in our search results summary so that's pretty nice cool so now that we've built out the yeah basically all the dynamic parts we can build out um, without fetching data from the real Yelp API uh, let's just finish the video right here and let's continue in the next uh, lecture where we will I guess finally start fetching some data from the Yelp API so they offer the so-called Yelp Fusion API and this is what we're going to use so thank you very much uh, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and also please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so and as a quick reminder um, please also don't forget the email list where you can vote for new topics where um, and then we can decide together what we will do next